from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm your host and the producer of the program, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. Now, if you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English, and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 47. Let's go to the zoo. Those are welcome words to millions of people every year, 118 million in the United States alone. The word zoo is short for zoolo vo zoological park or zoological park. Sorry, I kind of got my Spanish pronunciation in there. Uh, while there's nothing like being there, we'll bring you some video of zoos. Now, we do some serious language work in this episode. We're going to model and review discussion skills, and you'll see how this ties into today's theme of zoos. I won't keep you waiting any longer. Here's a video clip with scenes from three zoos, a zoo in Portland, Oregon, one in Oakland, California, and the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. As I said before, let's go to the zoo. Elephants. Seems like every zoo has to have some. Well, the Oregon Zoo in Portland has had great success in breeding and caring for elephants. A zoo is the place to go if you want to see animals you'd never see in your backyard, including some you'd never want to see in your backyard. The zoo is a great place to bring a kid. There's no mistaking the excitement when a child encounters a living, breathing member of the animal kingdom. Some children get to help in a zoo's conservation mission due to the education outreach at most major zoos, like this zoo in Portland. I recall one of my visits to the Oregon Zoo and watching this polar bear from above the water and then below the water watching it swim. It's a sight I'll always remember. I especially value this picture I took at the zoo in Portland. This sea lion is obviously aware and curious of the children just outside this spacious tank, and the hand on the glass demonstrates the desire to interact. I got my best wolf pictures at the Oregon Zoo, including this one. I once saw a gray wolf when driving in Canada, but I could never have come away with a picture like this one. Zoos have monkeys and exotic animals like this one. It's a place where children make a connection that could grow into an ethic of stewardship and conservation. With very few but well-publicized exceptions, zoos provide a place of safety both for the animals that live there and for the people who come to see them. Most people can't afford to take their family to Africa but zoos give them a chance to see exotic animals like these hippopotamus. In fact, African animals are well represented in American zoos. As Africa struggles with habitat loss and poaching, American zoos provide a lifeboat for some of this fauna through their breeding programs, all the while giving people a chance to see these great animals. Zoos are kid-friendly places that families can enjoy and learn about nature at the same time. Oh, 
We did our afternoon run through the meadow. I don't even make a noise. Okay, she's getting heavier. Okay, look. Sam? It's an adventure for the kids, a place of dazzling spectacle, and a partner in saving endangered species. Oakland, California has a zoo, a very impressive one, far beyond my early experiences, my memories of zoos, where animals were confined to steel cages. The animals here live in areas that resemble their habitats in their own homelands. The gular sac under their chin acts like an amplifier to make them call the loudest sound in the jungle. Or in the zoo. Siamang and white-handed gibbons are found in the same tropical rainforest in Southeast Asia. Within these areas, animals are free to move around and do many of the things they would do in nature. There are enclosures here, as in any zoo. In Oakland, volunteers set out food for the chimpanzees. They purposely put the food in different areas each day, making the chimps have to search for it. That doesn't seem to be a huge challenge for these intelligent primates. But this approach, known as enrichments, helps keep the chimpanzees active and healthy. Not all of the animals are beautiful or majestic. The warthog may not inspire awe, but it does attract attention. Zoos have breeding programs that serve as DNA banks for endangered species. Some of these have been successful enough to return some animals to the wild. A good example is the California condor, which was once on a one-way road to extinction. That could be the case for some populations of giraffes. Every zoo I visited in the United States has giraffes. <laughs> One of the joys of visiting a zoo is to hear the excitement of the people you also get to hear a variety of languages. A PBS program in 1987 looked at the connection between people and animals. ...in a man-made landscape thousands of miles from their ancestral homes. Today, there are more than 5 billion people on Earth. Never have we humans exercised such dominion over nature, nor been so removed from it. And yet we still wonder at living things. We know we are part of nature. Our animal past flows through our minds and bodies. And so, living in cities, we make zoos. And in searching for connections to wild creatures, we cage them. That was nice. Good boy, Herb. It seems the more urbanized we've become, the more we long for some remembered or imagined contact with wild animals. Each year, more people in the United States visit zoos than attend the arenas and stadiums of all the major professional sports teams combined. of us feel a profound need to connect.
fire boots. That last scene was of my little brother Eddie and me back in 1987. That was at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. With that cameo appearance from the past, we reach the end of segment one. We'll return with segment two right after this. Local organization that's doing big time restoration of forests and stream banks. Hello, I'm John Lex, producer of Adventures in Education.